Good morning and happy Sabbath to all of you. Welcome to our Sabbath School panel. My name is Brother Eduardo. And my name is Enrique Nataren. And this Sabbath, we will be studying lesson number five entitled, Christ, the Author of Eternal Salvation. Let's have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you once again for giving us this opportunity. And as we go through the lesson, we ask you, Lord, that you, Holy Spirit, will guide us and will teach us and will help us to understand what we are reading and help our viewers as well to understand and get the best of it. Lord, we know that you want to enlighten us, so we ask all these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. As we, be we begin a new year, with a new lesson, Gospel according to Paul, Hebrews. We are going to begin by reading the memory verse from Hebrews chapter 5, verse 9. We are on page 26. And being made perfect, Christ became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obeyed him. It is beautiful to see how throughout the Gospels, we see how they keep exalting Jesus Christ. And as the author of eternal salvation, it is important for us to keep this thought in our minds. And as we will go through the lesson, we will see how wonderful it is, the work that Jesus began doing and is continually doing in our behalf. Brother Enrique, would you read the thought there from This Day with God, page 72? Sure. The whole of our salvation comes through the gift of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. How glad I am. It comes from such a source that we cannot doubt it. And he is the author. Does he stop there? Does he stop there? The author and finisher of our faith. Thank God he attends us every step of the way through he, through. If we are willing to be saved in Christ's appointed way through obedience to his requirements. It's a very uh, interesting this that it says that he is the author of our salvation. But the, the quote asked twice, does it stop there? Does it stop there? And then he says, the author and it, and it adds the finisher of our faith. But uh, I don't know if you noticed when you were reading this, it says that through obedience to his requirement. Yeah. So salvation is not something that uh, we just say, I believe, and that's it. So it says here that the eternal salvation is based on something he gives to us. Amen. In return, we have to give. I think uh, further in the lesson, we will discuss a little bit more about salvation. Right. And it's, uh, and it's very important. You, you mentioned a thought there. Believe is not enough. The Bible also tells us that the devils believe, but they tremble. So yes. that means it's not enough. It's not enough. It's not enough. As we will go through the lesson, we will see that it doesn't stop there. Mm -hmm. It continues. It continues. It's a growing process. Yes, that's correct. And if we move to the first part of the lesson under Sunday, it brings out the fact that there is an appointed high priest. And in order for us to understand this term, high priest, we need to see how it, this was applied in the Old Testament. What does the um, writer of Hebrews 5, verse 1 and 2 tells us in regards to this? Well, if we see the, the, the verse that we, that we will read here, and it says uh, very clear, uh, For every high priest taken from among men is ordained for men in things pertaining to God, that he may offer both gifts and sacrifices from sin, who can have compassion on the ignorant and on them that are out of the way, for that he himself is uh, compassed 
with infirmities. So when we see these things, brother, uh, it is amazing to see that the, the, the high priest was interceding in the, in the sanctuary service right. for the people, for the people, for the ignorance, for those that were, uh, how can we say, uh, in, a, in a straight way, that they didn't know the truth. And those that were also discouraged, I assume, and he took them back right. to, the, to the fall. Yeah, and it's very clear that the function of the high priest in the Old Testament, it was to offer both gift and sacrifices. Yes. So it, there was a work to be done, but there's one word in the middle of those two verses that it really brings out the fact how those that work for the Lord need to have this constantly in their mind. It is, it is the word compassion. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, how many times we as parents, we are, don't have patience with our children. When they, you tell them something, you tell them not to do this, and they do it anyway. And, and, it, and it does happen again and again. And then, you know, our children teaches us that we must have compassion. And but it's but it's wonderful. And I don't know if we're going if we're going ahead of the topic, but see, as Jesus, our as our high priest in heaven, um, he is not assigned for a race, for a church, for a country, for a nation. He he is for everybody, and 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 that's why we see here that he was given to us to intercede for everybody for, Not, for that, the whole that, hum, that, human race and, yes. and this priest in the hebrew nation says that he was to represent to represent christ to represent, and, and, yes. that, and that's that was the, the the function of the high priest in the old testament that's correct. to represent that that intercessor for them yes and as we move to question b it is very interesting that um, the Old Testament priesthood, it, it all came from the tribe of Levi. But here, Christ was not a descendant of Levi, but was a descendant of Judah. Exactly, where, from the, where the kings will come. Right. But, but, but notice that it says here that uh, to which order of priesthood was Christ connected? He was not connected to the priesthood of Aaron. No. He was connected to the priesthood of Melchizedek. Right, that's what the verse tells us, right? Yes, and, and Melchizedek, uh, when Melchizedek was in existence on this earth, there was no Hebrew nation. No. There was not a specific church or a specific people that will lead the others, or in other words, that will be the channel from which God will display his mercy to everybody. But Melchizedek was a sign for everybody in that time. That's correct. No nation. And that's why uh, Christ comes from that priesthood. That priesthood, which as we will go into the lesson, it will, it will show us that, that is, it was a better priesthood and better than, than, than the one in the Old Testament. Um, it, to me, it is very interesting that um, this priesthood, this Melchizedek priesthood, was, was something that was prophesied. Yeah. Because it was written in, in the book of Psalms in 110 verse, verse 4, right? So that means that this was already to happen. Yeah. Jesus just needed to fulfill all the plan of salvation. And then when his offering was accepted, as he will go up to heaven, then he will become part of that priesthood, which is wonderful to see because nothing, not, not even the least thing was left aside by God. No. Everything was delineated in such a way Correct. 
that uh, the plan of salvation is, is, it shows us that it's, it, it comes from a perfect God. And, and since we are already talking about Melchizedek, that takes us to, to the next topic. To the next that, that in the, the title next thing, is yes. the subtitle is Melchizedek. Yes. And, and 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 when he says here, in what ways did Melchizedek prefigure Christ? I I, I read the, the Bible verses and I took the name. That's correct. <laughs> the name. He says that he was the king of righteousness. Yeah. And then he says, and was the king of of peace. King of peace. Now, many people get confused, and we will read in the Spirit of Prophecy here about this Melchizedek. Melchizedek was a man like us. But the thing is that why he says that he has no beginning and no end is because his priesthood was established by God in the person of uh, Melchizedek for everybody. But if this is making reference to the priesthood of Aaron. Remember? Yeah, because they did have a lineage. Exactly. And, and, and God said through Paul that the priesthood of Aaron, the glory of this ministry will perish because humans, um, we will say the imperfection of human made the, the service not perfect. Not perfect. And, and so it has to be taken away and that's the beginning, Aaron. That's the end when Jesus is crucified and he ended up with that ministry. Now, the Melchizedek priesthood, he took it forever. Forever, yes. Forever. That's what he mentions here, yes. If, that if abideth a priest continually, it says almost uh, on, on verse 3 of Hebrews 7. Yes. And, and it's very important uh, for our brethren and from those that um, attend Sabbath school through uh, via internet, that the Old Testament priesthood, though as imperfect as it was, yet it had a function. It was glorious in its way, but it was not perfect. Exactly. It was only until Jesus uh, became a priest under the order of Melchizedek that now that priesthood will he can yeah. serve everybody. Yeah. One was the shadow of the good thing to come. Exactly. And, 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 and if we see the, the priesthood of, of Melchizedek, he was to serve everybody. Yeah. It was not just the Hebrew people. And, and if you read uh, Isaiah 56, uh, it's talking about that if the foreigners come and, and obey my laws and my statutes and do all this ritual, they also will become what? My children. Mm -hmm. They will be adopted. But, but now we don't have to go through that. No. We, we, don't. we just go directly to Jesus. And I would like to read the, the, the quote here. We need to read those two quotes because those. It, will, it, will, it will clarify yes. uh, many things. If, if you don't mind, yeah. uh, you can okay. read it. He says, God has never left himself without witness on earth. This is uh, under question A. At one time, Melchizedek represented the Lord Jesus Christ in person okay. to reveal the truth of heaven and perpetuate the law of God. Hold on, but in those days, there was no, there was no nation. No. So which law is he talking here? It's the same law. He's talking about the Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments. So the Ten Commandments is the everlasting law. That's why he gives everlasting salvation. That's correct. Because if we obey the law, that will give us salvation. Amen. Keep going, brother. Then the next paragraph says, It was Christ that is spoke through Melchizedek, the priest of the Most High God. Melchizedek was not Christ, but he was the voice of God in the world, the representative of the Father. So this man, this man, was anointed by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Listen to that. He said he was the representative of the Father. Father because he was not manifested in full the plan of redemption. No. When, 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 when God established Israel in the wilderness and then established in the promised land, the priesthood had to do that. Reveal the Father, reveal the Son, and revealed the Holy Spirit, which thing was not accomplished 
No. Because they always fail. Remember the time of Eli, the priest? Was the people coming to worship God? No, no. Was, if the people of Israel was not worshiping properly, can you imagine that those that were not Israelites? Yeah. They were lost. So God has an accountant. So that's why he had to take that away. Mm, yeah. But it was not the time yet. No, it was not the time yet. That, that's correct. So the second part, the, the last part of the note that I read is very clear. He, Melchizedek was not. not Christ, but Christ spoke through him. And he was the representative of the Father. You know, there is, um, it always comes to mind the fact that there is the mystery of godliness. We cannot understand everything. But yet, enough is revealed for us to be saved. And that's what it really matters. You know, that, not to get into too many difficulties with Melchizedek because you don't find too much information about him. But it is enough for us to understand that he was somebody that was representing God here on this earth, working for the people. Because let us, let us not forget that he came in and, and blessed Abraham. And he brought two things. Yes. He brought bread, bread and, and wine. And wine. Yeah. In other words, this was a man of authority. He was, he was everything for the people. So yeah. he had to be a man of God, like John the Baptist, for example. Was John the Baptist the voice of God to announce the coming of the Messiah? Yes, the was. same The same homework, the same thing Melchizedek was doing and in, in interpreting the, the things God maybe spoke through him to the nations, and that, you know, they didn't listen. Question B is a, it's a very interesting question because it says, why couldn't Christ be the high priest on earth? Very simple. He was not a Levi. He was not a Levi, yes. And it's very interesting. The very first part of, this, of verse 14 tells us, for it is evident that our Lord is praying out of Judah, exactly. not out of the Levites. Yes. So here, when, when, when we see the scriptures, it is, it is very interesting that says, that when he says that evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah, of which tribe Moses spake nothing concerning to the priesthood. So now we see that Jesus is not waiting for Christianity, for the new believers to fulfill Moses' law. Right. Right there. So what, what other argument for those who believe that we have to go back to the rudiments, to the old gospel, because that was the gospel. But now we see that he didn't speak about that. No. He spoke about a new priesthood. Right. And that that you brought is, is, is very important. And it also, on verse 16, says, Who is made not after the law of a carnal commandment, but after the power over, of an endless life. It's amazing. Yeah. It's his, his, his priesthood uh, was uh, appointed by God. Would you like to read the quote there under question B? He has some very Do you want important... me to read from Christ glorified? Yes. It says, Christ glorified not himself in being made a high priest. God gave him his appointment to the priesthood. So he, wasn't, he didn't have to go to the rituals of the no. Aaronic law. Right. He was to be an example to all, human, the, to all the human family. He qualified himself to be not only the representative of the race, but their advocate. Okay. So that every soul, if he will, may say, I have a friend at court. He is a high priest that can be touched with 
the feelings of our infirmities. Jesus is officiating in the presence of God, offering up his shed blood as it had been a lamb slain. Jesus represents the oblation offered to every offense and every shortcoming of the sinner. The sinner. So we don't need to go back to Aaron. No. That's what Paul says in Galatians. Who told you to go back to these things? Because the Galatians, they, after they received the Holy Spirit, they, they accepted Jesus. Now they are going back to the rituals. Yeah. And, 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 and it was no benefit in it. No. And, and Paul uses a very, very strong words against him. So foolish Galatians. Exactly. Who has bewitched I didn't you? want to say it, but, but it's in the Bible. It is. You that. know, in and, 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 and those, those words, we will find it right, later, later in, the, in, the, in the lesson because there is some problems with the modern believers. So. But there is something to say that even though he couldn't be a high priest on, on this earth, he was compassionate with the people. And the most important thing is why he had to come is that he needed to prove that in this human flesh, we can overcome. Exactly. And now he can understand us because the, the part of the, the, the quote here says, he is a high priest that can be touched with the feelings of our infirmities. So he understands us when we're going through trials yeah. and difficulties. And, and let's remember that the mission of Jesus was not only come and die for humans, he, he was vindicating the kingdom Character. of his father. That's correct. He was uh, unmasking Satan. Yes. He was, uh, of course, providing for us. And as Colossians 2.15 says, he exposed all the hypocrisy of the leaders, right. priests, and Levites and, and all these people, they were mocking God by not fulfilling correctly the laws that he gave them. So Jesus had his coming was not just to die and now you're sick. Jesus, all the, 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 the universe was, all the weight of the universe was in his shoulder. That's why he says, Father, why me? <laughs> Yeah. Uh, but but that will be done, okay? I came here to do this. But the man, the man that can feel you and me was the one who was talking there. Bro. He was talking there because humans, that's why he can, he can feel our pains, our sorrows. Yeah. Because that was the man that was there. Yeah. In other places, the Bible tells us that he was tempted in all points as we are. Yeah. Exactly yet without sin. So, yeah, wonderful. Now, the next question here, Jesus, even though he was God here on this, uh, on this earth, when he walked through, we understand that he did not use his power to benefit himself. No. He used the power to help others. Others. But how was he preparing himself to become a high priest? Because that's the next question. Yeah. Question there. And he quotes Hebrews 5, 7, and 8. What did he do? Okay. He did this. Um, according to this text here, it says, uh, verse 7, right? Right. Mm -hmm. um, he says, Who in the days of his flesh, when he was offered up prayers and supplications with a strong crying, and tears unto him that was able to save him from death and was heard in that he feared. Verse 8, though he were a son, yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered. And the verse 9 continue, but that's the point that he being God, he had no thought to say, wait a minute, I'm God. I can do this by myself. He submitted to the Father. He, he was looking for the Father, companionship, to, to, to advise, to talk. And that's why he told them, my, the Father and I, we are one. And that's why they, they never, never will understand that. No. Even if Jesus started to explain to them, 
because they did not understand the, 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 the priesthood. No. They, no. they did not see themselves as the people suffering for humanity, period. Yeah. And it's very interesting. Um, when we analyze the life of our Lord Jesus from the moment he began his ministry, it was a difficult time. Three and a half years of being misunderstood, being talked about badly. Uh, they tried to kill him so many times. And finally, they led him to the cross. He was misrepresented. He was misrepresented. <laughs> For but, witness. But this, this thought here that yet learn he obedience by the things which he suffered. You know, John tells us that there were many things that they didn't write. Otherwise, there would be volumes of it. So I'm thinking... You will not have 66 books. How much, how much did our Lord Jesus suffer then? Because it was not just all, only the good things, healing here, healing there. and No, it was also the things that he was going through. But why is it important for us to understand the suffering of our Lord Jesus Christ? The quote, the second part of the quote, when it begins with Christ, Christ it the tells captain. us that, yes. Yeah, he Can says, you read it, please? Christ, the captain of our salvation, was made perfect through happy life. No. <laughs> it says, through suffering. Okay. So, can we expect any better? We're called <sighs> what? Christians, right? Yeah. Why? Because we are? Followers of Christ. Followers of Christ. And, and that, I, don't, I, I want to jump in the next part, but, but we, we have to clarify this little part here. Yes, we have to. It says, it says perfect through suffering. Through suffering. Uh, let, me, let me tell you a little experience I learned very quick. Um, they say that there is a material like a stone, and, and, and when they got it from the mine and they cut the stones, little stones like pebbles like this, they have a lot of shapes and things. And what they do is they have a big drum, metal drum with wires inside and things, and they throw all the rocks there and they start rolling. Mm -hmm. And the stones start hitting each other. And when this, this process is finished, <laughs> what they get? Perfect round. Perfect round mm -hmm. stone polish. And I think it's a, if the stone, the stone will talk, they will say, that was painful. Of course. <laughs> But then they become beautiful. I think this is the same with us. It is. It's, it's the same with us. It, it was polished by the fire of affliction. Yes. Purified by the, 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 the roughness of, of, of this, I will say, um, heat that human brought on Jesus Christ. Because they, they didn't come here with interrogations of explain to us. No, they come with the interrogation and then you are guilty. Even before you give us an answer, have you been in that situation? Yes. Yeah, they ask you something and they say, but you did it. Mm -hmm. So why, why you ask me that? Just yeah. take me to the, to the punishment. But Jesus was a mental suffering, not because he was not able to, but he was human. We, we need to understand that this priest can take care of us because he was human. And he was divine. divine. And he can understand that. Yes. I think it's worthy, brother, to read the, the, the next part. Yes. Because, yes, even though we have to go through suffering, we're not alone. Yes. It says, his followers, that includes you. And you too. Yes. His followers will encounter the enemy many times and will be severely tried. This is the word that I was looking for and a heat came to my mind because heat is fire. But it says, severely tried, but they need no despair. Christ says to them, be of good cheer. I have overcome the, the world. world. Yeah. Be of good cheer. Yeah. That's, uh, I mean, if anybody, any new Christ, uh, follower of Christ just been born, is thinking that after his baptism, now is easy life. No, it's not that way. It's not. It would be easy if we cling to Christ. Yeah. Yes, he will help us to go through all the trials and difficulties. But if we think that baptism will do a magical thing, we are dreaming. It's not so. We have to go through, 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 through trials and difficulties. So we will be going 
the same path that Jesus went. Before we go to the next part, brother, save to obey, another experience. I was in a camp meeting, my first camp meeting I ever went. Um, in, um, I, was, I was not even a member, okay? I wasn't baptized, but I was attending church. And, 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 and there was this man asking questions to a, all, all the young people. And I was there, and he was, why do you keep the Sabbath? Why do you keep the Sabbath? Why do you keep the Sabbath? And when he was approaching me, I was almost at the end of the line. I started getting nervous. So I said, what will I say? All these people already say, and nobody is right. And I say, I, I, I offer a quick prayer, and I say, Lord, help me to answer properly for your honor and glory. And then he says, and you, young man, because I was new, that he didn't know my name. Why do you keep the Sabbath? And my answer was, because I'm saved. That's why I keep the Sabbath. And he just looked at me and said, that was the, what the answer I was looking for. And then he started explaining that keeping the Sabbath doesn't save us. No. So when he said that, even I didn't understand properly, but I said that. You see, and now that I understand after years working with people and explaining this, it's so simple. We don't do anything. Right to be saved. Whatever you do, brother, whatever I do, even this lesson that we are presenting here and studying, and as a pastor, people think that pastors have an advantage. No. We are in the same level because salvation can be lost today. Yes or no? Yes, definitely. This morning after we go to divine service or after in lunchtime, padlock, in five minutes we can lose salvation. So but, I don't know if, if that is a good introduction to this save to obey. It is. It is because, you know, if we go back and look at Adam and Eve, they were lost as soon as they ate of that forbidden fruit. Yeah. But God did not let them perish. He came looking after them. And, and what did he offer? He offered them salvation. But... Now, what they were doing without thinking, which was obeying him, now they have to go through a struggle. Why? Because God said, if you, if you eat of that fruit, you will, will die. Die. You will certainly die. And, and, he, and, 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 and the name of the tree was the tree of knowledge of, of good, good and, evil. and evil. So now they knew what good and evil was. But... Thankfully, they repented, they accepted, and they continued from their own working on their salvation. So there is not much difference for us. But So, brother, let me ask you this question then. Uh, the question here says, can we be saved if we choose to be disobedient? So, so religion doesn't save you. No. The name of a church doesn't save you. No. Even to be a member of a church nope. doesn't save you. So why our brethren and, and, and why so many people have in their mind that by doing things they are pleasing God? It's because the misconception from the beginning, Adam and Eve, what they went after they committed sin, what they did, they run and found their own solution to, to present themselves before God. Sometimes that's what we do. That's most, what we do. Most, uh, more often we do that. So, so um, we, can we be saved if we choose to be disobedient? No. 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 There, there is no way. You know, when I was reading this, and I looked at the verses, there was a couple more verses that came to my mind. In Isaiah chapter 1, I have it here, uh, Isaiah chapter 1, verses 18, 19, and 20. Mm -hmm. We know these verses because it's very often used in altar calls and things of that nature. God says, come now and let us reason together, said the Lord, though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow, though they be red like crimson, 
they shall be as wool. That verse is very well known. Okay, God is appealing to us, come. Doesn't matter how bad you had been, if you repent, yeah? But notice what verse 19 says. If what? If ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat of the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, what will happen? Ye shall be devoured with the sword, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. So the, that little word, if, if, is the condition. Yes. So, so our salvation is conditional, no because of us. No. It's God who made salvation conditional. So anything that we do doesn't count. No. When we are disobedient to God, now then it counts. That's correct. It, it, the, law, the law of God doesn't save you, but condemns you. And this is what people need to understand that, like, do you steal? I'm asking you. No. Front, no. Do you lie? <laughs> no. Do you covet something else? Mm. No. Why do you do that? Because you want to be at peace with God? No. You do that because you don't want to offend a God that already saved you from that life if you had that life before. Sure. Okay. So we have to come to Jesus as we are. How many people delay their baptism? Oh, many. I have a study with some people up to two years. And they say, no, I want to, I want to do better. I want to do better. They never come to the baptism. So I, I explain to them, you are obeying. By accepting Jesus, you have the approval of God that whatever you start doing from now on will prosper. Because that's what John, 3 John uh, verse 2 said. I want you to prosper in everything. And even that you have health. That's what it says there. So, but it's talking also in the spiritual sense that you have salvation. That's correct. Okay, so we need to understand that, or we must understand that when we come to God, not because we already stopped doing some things, we are better than we were before. No. No, we are in the same condition. What guarantees us salvation is Jesus Christ. Who right. guarantees us obedience is Jesus Christ. It's not because you are trained in a missionary school or because you... you uh, I have been 26 years a minister. Now I, I already achieved. So there are ministers that have been 40 years more in the service. And they are candidates for what? For temptation. Oh, definitely. Does, does that experience of 40 years make them better than the one that just started yesterday as a member of the church or the one that started accepting the truth yesterday? Definitely not. No. So, Saved to obey, that's the only reason we are saved. Right. And, you know, as you were, this, to, you were talking, the experience of Mary Magdalene came to my mind. Because I was trying to figure out how we can approach the subject here, saved to obey. What, what were the words that Jesus spoke to Simon? Because he was thinking, does he know that the kind of woman is doing this to him, washing his feet. And what did Jesus answer to him? I mean, understanding what he was thinking. What did he say? He that uh, receives more, right? Is more mm -hmm. gracious. Loves more. Mm -hmm. But he that receives or gives less. It's limited. Yeah. So... In order for us to understand this, you know, it, we, we, sometimes we don't understand what crucifixion meant back then. You know, we see pictures, we, we kind of look, oh, that was bad, the Romans were really bad. But let us not focus on the Romans, let us focus on what, in what Jesus went through for you and for me. Yes. And for our brethren that are visitors that are attending the Sabbath school. So... When you think about this, I mean, what, how should we react to, to a person that saved our, our life? Yeah. You know, I, I, I do whatever he wants me to do. Oh, 
I mean, how much gracious would you be if you are walking, you know, with the phone here like, like this and somebody just pulls you back because there was a car coming that you didn't see? How gracious, how much would you appreciate that I invite that him that person, to eat lunch. You would be very appreciative, <laughs> right? So that's what happens. That's what I see. It happens many times. Yet we accept the sacrifice of Christ, but we don't understand. And, 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 and that love is not reciprocal. Yeah. And, and as, as we were saying, um, we must, we must go to God as we are. Okay. And, and, and the next question, uh, it, it will address something, brother, that, that you are, that you are um, um, talking right now. Because Simon, when, when Jesus was there, he says, this man doesn't know who this woman is. And man, it's in my room, it's in my, in my house. What the people will think about me, a, a priest, a member of the Sanhedrin. Right now, the next question, and it's good that you brought that. He talks about that. To whom are we pleasing? Right. Are you pleasing your pastor? Are you pleasing a comedian in the church that if you don't fulfill their standards, that you will be disfellowship or discipline? And many people obey by fear, by, by the pressure of the peers. My mom pressed me to wear this. I don't want that, but I have to fulfill. Otherwise, I will be in trouble. Young people think like that. Right. And so I, I, I encourage the viewers to think about this. Who am I pleasing? And that's what the question says here. Who am I pleasing? What is the testimony? And, 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 and if you don't mind, I, 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 will, I will read the Acts, uh, five, Act 5, 29 to 32. And, and he says, Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. That, that's the, that's, this sentence there explained to us that we do not belong to anybody but Jesus. Yes, we are members of the church. We are one body and we, are, we have responsibilities, but that doesn't mean salvation. How many people fulfill their responsibilities in the church and they have a miserable life in their homes? Uh, there may be many, there'll be many. How many of us go to the pulpit and during the week we had a big problem? But we're still there. We have to fulfill the, 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 the responsibility. So we need to understand that obey to be saved goes beyond fulfilling a set of rules and regulations. It goes to the property of God. Right. Uh, you know, you just reminded me the, the words of Samuel to Saul when he told him to obey is better than sacrifice, than the fats of rams. <laughs> See, everything, when you collect all those verses and put it together in the perspective of Jesus as a Messiah, as a Savior, as a, our, our intercessor, now everything connects. Yes. Because it's not just, it was not put in the Bible for fulfilling the, the blank or filling the blank or, or something. It, the Bible is a, a collection of thoughts that confirm our condition before God. Another verse that came to my mind is Psalms 40, verse 8. I delight to do thy will, O oh my God, thy law is within my heart. And that was and, Jesus. And that was Jesus. It was David under inspiration, but yet it was fulfilled because also Paul says that. And, and when you see the, the life of Jesus, and, and we understand the word delight, you know, we have been children. When our parents told us not to do something, we... We were like tempted to go and do it. And, you know, did we obey with delight? <laughs> um, sometimes, sometimes not. <laughs> when, but, it, when it was our convenience, yes. Oh, yes. We were delight to do sure. it. Sure. But, 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 brother, you're touching something very important that that's the problem of us as humans. Sometimes we do things that we don't like it. Yeah. Uh, I was thinking the other day, and I was preaching that I say, how do you know that you are growing? Because nobody can tell you that, only the Spirit. Right. You have to put yourself a test. 
whatever you want to do against something or against somebody, do the opposite. And then you will know if you are growing. Right. And this takes us to the next part of the lesson on yes. Wednesday, page 29, mm -hmm. moving on to maturity. And I think we already touched a little bit of the condition of many professed believers. believers. But let's and, 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 read and, and, just one portion and, and here. We have to make uh, clear we're not attacking anybody. No, we're not. We, we're talking about Christianity as in general. But we are also Christians, and so therefore something has to go with us. Yeah. In Hebrews 5:11, there's a one part of in verse 11. It says, um, "He said, uh, let me read it from the beginning to have the context here. Of whom we have many things to say and hard to be uttered, seeing ye are dull of what, of hearing. Mm -hmm. When is this expression used?" It is like when we say, right, we hear something, it goes through one ear and it goes through the other You have one. nothing in between. No, there's nothing in between. So God is speaking to us and, and he sees our difficulties. But the solution is right there in the Bible. But what is the problem? Do you don't read the Bible? You know, <laughs> God used a very strong word in the Old Testament. He used to call them a stiff neck. Yeah. And that's a very strong Somebody word. Somebody stubborn. Somebody that is stubborn, yes. And or Paul uses the word, you are carnal, you are foolish, you are this, you're that. But 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 brother, also there's people that read the Bible, but look at the verse 13. I, I was I was amazed. You know, you read the Bible sometimes, but when you apply it in the right, it gives you a new spark. And he says, For everyone that's useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness for he is a babe what does this mean how many people have been persevering in christianity and they don't change they don't grow up because they always go superficial in the bible and whatever is not in their accord what they do oh it doesn't apply to me yeah exactly <laughs> they they avoid that part and, 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 and I like to, to, I would like to read the, the paragraph. I don't know if you finish. I'm sorry to interrupt no, no, no. you. But, but look, look in, in the second paragraph, in the second paragraph, in question A on Wednesday, it says, During the year and a half that Paul had spent in Corinth, he had purposely presented the gospel in its simplicity. I mean, the easiest way. Why? Paul had necessarily adapted his manner of teaching to the condition of the church. And then he says, I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto a spiritual. He afterward explained to them, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. We cannot continue all, all the time being babes coming to church, going to home, but coming to church. We need to grow. We need, we to, need test. to advance. We need to advance. And then in the, in the next, next part that I highlighted here, where it, it starts saying, when they should have been far advanced in Christian experience and able to comprehend and to practice the deepest truth of the word. They were standing where the disciples stood when Christ said to them, I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye, can, you, ye cannot bear them now. Jealousy, evil surmising, and accusation had closed the heart of many of the Corinthians, believers against the full working of the Holy Spirit, which searched all things, yea, the deep things of okay. God. Okay. So, however wise they might be in worldly knowledge, they were but babes in the knowledge of Christ. So, that, that's why the Holy Spirit cannot give us more power. Because the more you study, the more you read, the more you practice. And, and when I say the more you practice, brother, it's not just the physical thing. I'm talking about spiritual things. Like, for example, to forgive somebody. Practical to, things of Christianity. Exactly. To, to go and care for somebody without asking why. 
without this condemnatory uh, uh, behavior. That you have to know why you are hurt in order to help. Just help and forget about it and move on. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, so basically what you just read, um, for us as Christian, we need to understand that there is no such a thing as being content where we are. No. Advancing. We need to continue advancing. And under question B, uh, it appeals to us through the different verses here in Hebrews 5, 14, 6, 1, 1 John 3, 18, Hosea 6, 3, that we cannot stay where we are. I like Hosea for the time's sake here that um, it, mean, it mentions here the former rain and the latter rain. Yes. For those that don't understand, when the farmer puts the seed, we re then he does it before what rain? The former rain, right? Yeah. What does that rain do for the seed? Prepare the, prepare the seed. And then, and then the, the rain keeps coming, Sprout. and then it sprouts and keeps going. How is that, that plant growing? Is that deficient or is perfect in that environment? It's perfect in the environment because it's raining, it's coming up. And as it keeps growing, it's, it's perfect? Yes. Yes, it is. Then the time comes when the latter rain comes, and what does the latter rain do? Mature the fruit of the plant. Ah, and then it's ready for what? To be eating. <laughs> for the harvest, what? Well, to be eating. Yes, so... Um, That's why I get my fruit, to eat them. That I understand. <laughs> but we need to understand that uh, in our Christian experience, as a little plant that, is, that comes from a seed, it will continue growing until it matures, until it's ready. And that fruit, with all this time, it's perfect. And, and, and something that I would like to mention here, I did something uh, in, in, in my backyard with the rain. I left some water in a fish tank that was there abandoned and I left the water just to see what happened. The water was in the middle of glass, not going up, down, anything, and it was under the tree. And after a week, you know what happened to that water? It was green. It was full of bacteria and everything. That's it what died. Happened. Yeah, it, it died. It, 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 it was rotten. That's what happened to us when we don't advance. We die because we are dead. The water doesn't flow. Oxygen is gone. So that's the problem with us. The Holy Spirit is the oxygen. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Now, uh, very quick, brother. Uh, the last paragraph in B, because I know time is, 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 a, is, a, is a treasure here, but the church will never as a whole receive the latter rain unless they shall put away envy, evil surmising, and evil speaking. Those who, we, who have cherished hatred in the heart un, until it has strengthened and become part of their character must have a different experience if they will share in the, the latter rain. rain. So I, I cannot, I cannot be a pastor and be angry at you. No, we cannot. My ministry is, 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 is a failure. Yeah. If I keep something against you and I tell you, I forgive you, but I don't forget what you did to me. My ministry is rotten. Yeah. So we have to be cleansed from that evil spirit. And what will happen if we purpose in our hearts to do what the Lord is asking us to do, you know, to put all those things aside. We will come into Christ likeness, which is the last part of the lesson yes. here. So what is God's aim? What is God's goal for us? Before I answer that question to you, was Jesus perfect? Yes, he was. Okay. What did Adam lost in the Garden of Eden? The image of Jesus. The image of God, yeah. So the aim of God, now I will answer is to you, restore is to restore that perfection. That image that was lost. Exactly, that image. And that's why the, the, the aim of God, the aim of the Father, the aim of the Son, the aim of the Holy Spirit, because the three of them are in this. They work this together, yes. For our own salvation, is to restore in us their image. 
right, right, yeah. In Philippians uh, 3, 12 through 16, especially verse 13 in the middle, it says, Forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth for those things which are before, I, said Paul, press toward the mark for the price of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Let us therefore as many as be perfect, be thus minded. Wow. It's very strong, but he puts it in such a beautiful way that, I mean, it should awake us. Encourage us. Yes. In the words that we used before that we read already, he said, be a good cheer. I have overcome the world. Should stay in our mind, in our mind. no matter what comes to us. And this thing that I will tell you, brother, because we have to come to a conclusion is found in the paragraph, the first paragraph, second paragraph, uh, and it's the last part that says, and that's why I say we have nothing to boast of. No. Uh, my salvation, oh, I sing well, I am a good preacher, I have 40 years in this church, I am this, I am that. No, look what it says. Christ always separates the contrite soul from sin. Who was the one who does it? Christ. Christ. Okay, then he says, he came to destroy the work of the devil. Who does it? Christ. Christ. We don't do anything. And he has made provision that the Holy Spirit shall be imparted to every repentant soul to keep him from sinning. So what do you do, brother, for your salvation? Nothing. What do I do? Well, Nothing. You don't do anything. The only thing that we have to do is submit, submit. in the hands of God. And that will be the solution. Yeah. And then he says, the work of overcoming is not restricted to the age of the martyrs. The conflict is for us in these days of subtle temptation to worldliness, to self-security, to indulge of pride, covetousness, false doctrines, and immortality of life. So the provision has been made for us. God is ready to protect us. So I'm so happy that this lesson have all this material in it. Yeah, and, and it makes an appeal also here. It says, let us make an application of the words of Christ to our own individual cases. Amen. So I cannot just because the Bible says, you know, rebuke, exhort. <laughs> I need, before that, you need to be I need to rebuke myself. Yes. I need Amen. to search myself. I agree with that. Use those same thing for me. Is there, I am, am I blind? Am I wretched? Am I miserable? You know, all the list that you read, all those things. What I the, need what, to ask myself. What does Paul says? Examine yourself. Whether you are in the faith. Or maybe or you have been disqualified. Yeah. So, my dear brethren, it is important for us to always keep in mind that as believers in Christ, as believers in this wonderful and beautiful gospel, the best that we can do is to come to the foot of the cross. Amen. And put all our cares right there because He cares for us. He may be looking at you, but not with a condemnation, but with love, ready to save you. So let us think about these things and have a final word of prayer so we can uh, have more time to think about this lesson because it has a beautiful thoughts for all of us that we should ponder for the rest of the week. Amen. Our gracious and kind Heavenly Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus, we come to you and we thank you for thy many blessings, for giving us this day in which, Lord, we can set aside all things and center our thoughts and our desires in serving you. We pray, Lord, that you will help us to be willing and obedient as our Lord Jesus was. And we may turn to thee, Lord, with a full assurance of our salvation and 
have also the hope that we will reach the other, the other shore and we will enjoy that which you have prepared for us. Bless us, Lord. Keep us. And above all things, may that will be done in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to invite you for next Sabbath, where we will be addressing the next lesson, lesson number six, entitled Growing in Understanding. For that, I invite you in the name of Jesus, and we will see you then. Amen.